We have a guest, as Dirk just alluded to. We have a rare treat for you to close the show this week. Uh, we have a guest in the studio, our good friend Mike McWright's in town, and he's here to shoot the latest episodes of his training series, Creating and Sustaining Lean Improvements. Uh, that's the video training series that's available only through our sister company's website, 360 Performance Circle, 360PerformanceCircle.com. Now, Mike's latest article for us, uh, called Lean Tools Are Ideal for Product Life Cycle Management, ran last week in Quality Digest Daily, and it addressed, as we just were talking about, the theme for our month, which is, of course, the product life cycle, and how issues of the product life cycle uh, affect quality and, and vice versa. So, to join us now to chat about this topic and a lot more, we're very pleased now to be joined by our very own Mike McElright. Mike? Thanks for joining us. You're welcome. Thank All you. Right. Yeah, it's good to have you here. Well, you're a lean guy. You know, you, you're, you're, you're you're actually you're a lot you, leaner than you, you used to be. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. You lost some weight. I am. I, I like to say that I got rid of some overproduction and lost some inventory, and <laughs> but it was at the expense of a lot of transportation on the treadmill. <laughs> <laughs> so, that, there you go. That's right. That's right. Good stuff there. Well, um, so you're a lean guy. You, you, I think that that you know you're well known. You, you adapt lean principles in, in your work life, and you you help people understand how to do that, and in your personal life too, as we just just heard. Um, but really, when you look at the product life cycle, I think it's a great application for lean. And it's one that people don't maybe think about as much. But I think it's one that we all can agree is really important to bring those disciplines to the product life cycle. Wouldn't, wouldn't you say that's true? Yes, absolutely. Of course. You know, I mean, when you, when you think about, first of all, the let's, let's look at the beginning of the product life cycle, life cycle, the design process. And, of course, it is a process. And lean, of course, one of the key principles is all about being process focused. Focus on the process, not the departments, not, not metrics, but primarily on the process. So as such, the design process is a process, and it is riddled with waste. And it's riddled with waste because no one really ever watches it. No one looks at the process itself uh, or studies it. It's not like going out to a manufacturing floor and watching uh, widgets being created. Uh, we don't tend to watch the, the process itself of design. So as such, there's so much waste. There's a company that I did some work for some time ago where we we did a value stream map of the design process, and we found over 180 handoffs of a design, average. So handing off from one department or person to another person, and every time there's a handoff, of course, there's an opportunity for a problem. Uh, waste buildup, uh, errors being made, documents being lost, whatever. So it's riddled with waste. Um, and so what we need to do is, 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 of course, look at the design process holistically, um, but then look at the entire process. So when we talk about life cycle, again, lean is about being process focused. Well, we want to look at the process of the product, living, the living product until death, okay? So the product is designed in someone's head, it's created, and then it's produced, and then it goes to the consumer, and then it finally goes to its final burial spot, whatever that is. A person within an organization has to look at the entire process and has to be focused on the entire process. Now, if an organization has uh, uh, some kind of commitment to the environment uh, to make sure that uh, they're environmentally responsible and and they throw away a product that hurts or harms the environment then in my mind that's a defect they've just created a defect because it goes against their own policies of being environmentally focused and so we have to look at that so as a defect it's waste and waste we should get rid of and we have to look at it throughout the entire life cycle so, you know, now one, one thing that you see sometimes is, uh, you know, you see an organization, I've seen this many times, where design engineers are still not allowed onto the production floor because their focus is, they're, they're told that their focus is to create designs. Right. Spit out designs as much as possible. Yeah, never mind what those other guys are doing. Yeah. Never mind. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so, and, and, and how silly that is. That's so anti-lean. In fact, I call it fake lean. Fake lean. Uh, it's really <laughs> fake lean because, yeah, we're, we're only going to practice lean, you know, in the manufacturing area. We'll do a couple things here. We're, we're a lean organization. Well, that's not true. A true lean organization uh, is, is process focused, and that means someone is responsible for the entire product line uh, all the way through from creation to death. Mm -hmm. now, um, let's back up a little bit. Uh, one thing that kind of struck me is when you mentioned uh, let, let's, we, one of the silos is the design silo, right? Mm -hmm. And it goes from the design silo over into the manufacturing silo in, in a company that really isn't run properly. How does all this tie into maybe, let's say, risk or risk management? I mean, there's got, I would assume there's got to be a connection between uh, what you're talking about and the real hot topic right now, which is, which is risk. I mean, uh, they would seem to go hand in hand to me. Absolutely, and, and, and they do. And, um, you know, 
So what an organization should do is, is of course, manage the risk. That's what risk management is. Sure. You have to manage it, okay? So that doesn't mean I just do an FMEA. There's a whole management process uh, to make sure that it's all uh, systemic within the organization and, you're, and there is a way to constantly monitor and reduce risk along, along the way. So oftentimes uh, an organization might, uh, let's say for a project, for a design project, since that's what we're talking about, risks are of course highest at the very beginning uh, when you identify all the risks and there's so many questions to be answered. And with time, uh, obviously we should be decreasing all of our risks, but we have to identify those risks perhaps quantify those risks and have bogeys or targets along the way to continuously hit those points so we make decisions, wise decisions, do we move on from here or not. And, uh, and so risk management is an entire process to focus this in on, on, on how to reduce the risk of certain products and processes along the way. So, and obviously as you said, it's a hot topic. Uh, a lot of the standards, uh, um, aerospace standard, the medical device standard have been addressing risk management for, for quite some time. Uh, but now ISO 9001, as so many people know, mm -hmm. uh, will be coming out uh, later this year and, and it's addressing risk management. So it's, it's kind of scary for some people. Mm -hmm. But really, in reality, we should have been doing this all along. Yeah, right, right, right. I mean, it's, when you think about, you know, uh, well, what's a preventive action? Well, a preventive action is simply an action that you take after you have identified potential problems. Mm -hmm. Oh, you mean like risks? Yeah, 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 yeah something yeah, like that. Yeah, something like that. Um, and, and, so, and so it's really just the next step up. It's a good step. It's a positive step, in my opinion. Um, but now we're using the terms risk management. The other thing that's going to be key is we have to look at it, again, holistically. So risk management for a certain product, but also for projects, but also at the strategic level. You know, what are those opportunities? What are those strengths? What are those threats out there? What are those risks out there? And how do we mitigate those risks? monitor them, take action to get rid of those risks, decrease them. Let, let me ask you the yeah. same question kind of we, we asked Davis just, just a while ago. Okay. Again, uh, based on a conversation Mike and I had a while ago, uh, you've been in this business for a long time. Is the impression to you that we've kind of lost sight of the quality, the, the, the quality gurus of the past and the, and the lesson? I mean, you're a big Deming fan. I mean, are we kind of ignoring those lessons? I mean, basically the same question I asked Davis. What's, what's happening with this, this always on the tip of our tongue, you know, Deming, Duran, all these other greats that, that we've talked about in the past. Well, I've, I've, always, I've often said that we have to make quality cool again. Uh, <laughs> and it's lost some of its swagger. It's lost some of its coolness. That it uh, had in the, 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 the mid to late 70s. That, yeah, that's right. yeah, yes, yeah. yes. But, but of course, at that point, you know, in the mid to late 70s and into the 80s, we were desperate because we were losing <laughs> market, market share and so mm -hmm. quality became yeah. cool. Um, uh, by, by, by nature. Yeah. So I, we, we've, we've perhaps lost the coolness there. Now, is it still there? Absolutely. It's, it's, it's still pre prevalent. It's still important. Um, it's just more of a commodity, you might say. It, it's become more of a commodity. Which they, people could don't, be a good thing, though. Well, yes, it could be a good thing. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I think we lose sometimes our focus and our opportunities to further improve and set, our side, set ourselves apart, apart from others. Right. Um, so there's still opportunities. Um, it's, just, it's just that it's, it, it's almost a given now. And um, it's almost a given. And that's only in some industries. Right. I mean, obviously, there are some industries, service industries, et cetera. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Quality should be at the top of the, prior, <laughs> right, right. the priority yeah. list. Mm -hmm. And so we need to. So I, I think it's, it's still there. Um, uh, all the knowledge about quality and lean, uh, it, so much of it's, it's been around for a long time. Uh, some, sometimes it comes out in new forms, new books and so forth. Um, but the basics are there. And um, I think we kind of use them. And it also has morphed. Uh, as I said, a, a lot of quality, uh, the quality aspects, the quality philosophies have morphed into what we now call lean. Yeah. Right. Yeah, see, to me, I mean, uh, thinking about Deming and, and his great book, Out of the Crisis, which was really the, the, the idea that began this whole, whole thing with his, his, uh, his prevalence in the 70s that Dirk talked about. And, and you wrote a book, I believe, called Out of Another uh, Such and Such <laughs> Crisis. Um, but the not idea- Not quite as popular. That's quite popular. <laughs> uh, but but you know, the idea that, that, that it takes crises that, that it's, it's really kind of firefighting if you think about it. I mean, it you want to get beyond crises. You want to get, be, you want to get beyond continual improvement into continuous improvement, right? You want to just make this the water you swim in, the way you do business, right? Yeah, yeah. I would think. And, and, um, you, and you, you mentioned Stephen Covey before. Yeah, you were yeah. talking about Stephen Covey, Covey, one of the great business uh, gurus. Yep. And he talked, he gave us the time management matrix and it was basically a way to think differently and move us away by, move us away from crisis by management right. to crisis by, I mean, uh, uh, prevention management. Right. Uh, and doing things like 
FMEAs or risk management. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Spending more time on risk management. Mm -hmm. So again, it's been around for a long time, mm -hmm. but now it's going to be part of the standard, and that's a good thing. Yeah, well, great. Okay, well, well thank, thanks, Mike. I